Another one day? One day! Another one day. 1102. It's a little strange, but there's a super standard lure that I have yet to make in a video. I mean, even old grandpas fished with this one. Hula poppers and the old headens and stuff. They're, they've been around. And you know what I'm talking about already. It's impossible to build suspense on YouTube here. It's the reason you click on these videos is to watch me make and fish with what I already let you know I'm making and fishing with, so. Poppers, I just drew this out. This is gonna be an interesting one. I tried to go with a shape and look that I've never seen. That, look, that one looks pretty interesting. I was gonna do an ultralight, but I figured why. I don't need to do an ultralight. Full size conventional tackle. I think this thing's three inches long, actually. We're gonna get into some top water action by the end of this video. One day. This is a piece of one inch thick poplar. I think this wood poplar, it has plenty of buoyancy or floating power to keep this bait upright on the, on the surface while it pops. In a top water popper, you put the weight towards the back here. That way it sits in the water like this. And when you pull right here on the line tie, it comes up to a perpendicular angle to the water. Those two motions together, the up and the perpendicularness, throws water forward and it makes that pop noise. I have made poppers in the past and the number one mistake or reason for failure with these baits is that the mouth isn't big enough and it doesn't pop. Pretty simple. You gotta make sure that you leave plenty of this stuff up here to hollow out and you want a deep recess in the mouth here and plenty of surface area for it to... It seems simple but that can be tricky. That can be... Uh, overlooked because you want the mouth and the head and the proportions all to be right and usually that requires like a smaller tapered head you kind of naturally want that look to make your bait look nice and sleek and good but no you leave it big up front so it pops don't give in to the temptations so I'm not even gonna cut away anything up here I'm just gonna taper the body poppers usually have a really long taper The mouth of this popper is going to be sort of a horizontal oval. I need to draw out, get it exactly how I want it, and then not cut past that line ever. And the line that I'm drawing right now too, I want to be, you know, having as much surface area inside of it as possible. I'm just kind of just taking off the edges like that. That's all I've ever done to this knife to keep it sharp is strop it. And it stays scary sharp. Roughly carved. Sanded. I might as well make this a through wire. It'd be easy to do so, just cut the slot and make the wire for them and put it in. But I have to hollow out this mouth before I do that and get all this the way it needs to be before I get a wire sticking out of it. So the best way to hollow out a popper's mouth that I've found is with one of these, or something like this. This is a uh, circular burr bit that you put in your Dremel. I suppose you could also stick one of these in a drill, a hand drill. It'd just take longer because it's not a high speed kind of thing, or even like a drill press. I'm gonna use my Dremel. That'll be good. Okay, let's draw a line this time. Let's find center. See how good I am with a line now. Last video I didn't draw a line and it was way off. But yeah, this is the slot I'm cutting to put the wire in the bait. 
Jeez. How am I that far off still? This is what I do for a living. I need to tilt this up a little. Pretty even. I came a little off back here. It's uh, that happens a lot, you know? It's just a little off, it's not bad. Barely noticeable. That'll be what the line tie looks like. It's the front hook hanger. And that'll be the rear one. I have to, you know, hold all of these wires in place and glue them for them to be in the correct position when I'm ready for that. For now, I need to drill this lead hole. Get that lead pot heating up, and we'll drill a hole. I gotta keep in mind that this is poplar. This is not a super buoyant wood, so I can't be putting a ton of lead in this or it's gonna sink. And nobody wants a topwater popper that sinks. <laughs> You just want a top water popper that leans back. So I'm thinking right there. I'm not even gonna mark it. That is what we're looking for. Whew. So it's a little tricky to get this wire in and have it be in the correct position. Literally just have to hold it like that. I'm pushing my thumb against the top of the bait and squeezing the pliers and I'm gonna glue it like this. I need some accelerator. Oh, there we go. It just held. Push this down. Sorry, this is difficult. I can't talk. <laughs> it's getting a little tense too because I, I glued the front one in. And that also kind of glued the middle one in. I had to like break it loose. And then I just glued the middle one in. Some glue trickled down to the back here. But that's okay. We got it. Now it's through wire. And everybody's happy. There's the front line tie, the middle one, and the rear one. People have been saying that they don't like my square line ties. Whatever, man. Those look cool. Who would want a round line tie or hook hanger when you can have square ones? Come on, people. Round line ties. Lead pot's ready. That might be too much. This better not sink. One sec. I drilled a little bit out. That felt like it was too much. Feels good now. This super glue and baking soda mixture actually sinks really heavy. They're really fast. So this is actually adding some weight to the belly as well. Gotta locate these eye sockets. I'm just gonna match this stencil up on both sides. And go drill them out. And then I can finish stenciling the gills. There's the gills roughly carved. Gotta get that sanded down some now. That's a nice pattern though. The uh, open mouth design with that little plate right there by the mouth. Looks good. Whew. Using a micro file right here to smooth out the rough carves. This is the fastest way I've found. Turns out clean. Looks nice. It's good stuff. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, with one of these you can really get in there. Use the tip and just, you know, it's like that. Nice and clean. So got this bait completely sealed with super glue. It's going to require a thorough sanding because I was a little messy with that super glue sealing right there. But then it's on to painting. All right, I got this bad boy well sanded, clamped up, easy to hold, ready to paint. You know what that looks like? A baby bass is exactly what that looks like. We're doing a baby largemouth bass on this thing. See if we can get a cannibal to eat it. Baby, topwater, largemouth. That was a base coat of white. So looking at a picture here, this is a lot like the baby bass I'm used to. And it gets really gold up here. And there's almost like a, you really can't see it with this camera looking at this computer screen, but like an orange, barely. 
more brown. Browns and golds, greens, and then whites and pinks. That's what I'm gonna do from top to bottom. Started it all off with a red oxide. You can barely see it, but I think that was necessary to get the top looking more brownish and goldish. So I've got that green blended in with that reddish brownish on the top. Now I'm going to come in with this fluorescent color. It's just called uh, fluorescent aqua. And I'm going to try to mix all that up and blend it well with this color. That is pretty good. That's a good base to start with. I'm going to put all the scales and other pearlized colors over this. We're going to start these scales with some pearl white. It's not exactly silver that I'm seeing in that picture. It's white. I'm going to try to cover the gill plate with my thumb again. That works pretty good. When you're doing scales like this, you really need to wait and let that color dry before you add another color to the scales. But now the next and last color is just gold. It's gonna go on the shoulders pretty heavily. And I don't mind getting the gold on the gill plates, actually. That's how it looks in the picture. Let's see how this turned out. Gorgeous. Very gorgeous. There's a lot more to do. This is a lot of color I gotta tame down. We're gonna add all of the black detail and uh, you know, probably a lot more white on the belly because that's the way these look. Yeah, let's get to it. Okay, this process right here is going to be full of ways to destroy the paint job on your bait because I am gonna freehand all of these details with an airbrush into the side of this bait. I'm using some detailed black, transparent black. I turned down the PSI on my airbrush to about 20 and uh, here we go. I just did the eye socket. That's more me delaying this and procrastinating and not just painting what needs painted. I think I'm just gonna start on the top and come down a little bit with some details. And then I'm gonna go across the middle and try to keep it really thin. I need a higher PSI. That's not too shabby. I really don't want to do much more than that. I'm gonna bring some stuff in the gills out a little better, but that looks good. I painted the back of this bait black just to get a better idea of the full picture of what this is gonna look like. Now I'm doing the other side. So now I need to lighten up the belly on this bait and then add some really, really light pink flesh tony highlights. I think I'm gonna make the mouth red too. Got that traditional red mouth for the popper. That turned out pretty good. Not super noticeable, but that adds really good detail and it outlines the gills a little bit better, that pink. All we gotta do now, glue on an eye or two. We're gluing on two eyes. This one really turned out nice. Maybe I'll get Chelsea to tie me a feather treble for this. That would really complete it, a matching feather treble. Chip, go get Chelsea. This is the bait you're matching. Oh my, honey. That was good. Thanks. What a gorgeous popper. By the way, this is the treble that Chelsea tied for it. She, she decided to go with just some red in the center, white, and your standard black and silver flash. Very little assembly with this bait. Just put the treble hooks on and go fishing. Let's do that. I'm gonna cut the drip right here. And you can get your wire out. Need to get some split rings for this. Kind of tricky getting the line in a recessed line tie like that. 
Let's go catch something. Oh, here it is with the feather too. Lots of detail. Let's go catch something with it. I know, I go to this creek a lot, but the fish are biting. And so long as the fish bite, I'll be here. Probably just jinxed myself. Let's do some creek fishing with the popper. The creek's going down. It's 4.11 right now. Let's get a thumbnail and let's catch a fish. Story of my life. First cast. That does a really good job of throwing water forward. Good first impression. I'm glad I can go this way in the creek now. Usually it's the water's too high to go this way, but there might be some better spots down here for sure. Got one. Ah, dang it. That was a really lame hit and I set the hook all awkwardly. Ah. Dang it. <laughs> I feel really pathetic right now. Dang it. There we go. That was a better hookup. Large mouth. You cannibal. How could you? It's official. Large mouth bass like large mouth bass poppers. Babies. They eat their own babies. It's official. I'd say my colors were spot on too. Look at that gold up there. Not too far off. Whoa! Okay, let's get some more, hopefully different species too. This seems like a good spot. Got him. Wow, my hunch was correct. This feels like a better one. Not bad. It is a little bit better. That's a little bit better of a bass. He got me very muddy. Wow. Yeah, this is a very good spot. There's a log in the middle right here and then there's that structure over there. It's a creek full of cannibals. Another large mouth. Popper's not doing bad today. Holy crap. Did you guys see how big that fish was? What was that? Holy crap. Look at it. Why isn't it hitting my bait? <laughs> oh my goodness. This is getting the adrenaline going. By the way, forgot to show it in the last last video too, but caught that first fish at like a long time ago. It's almost six o'clock already. <laughs> it's the same day, I'm not cheating. Don't worry guys. Okay, back to where we started, but we're going upstream now. The day's not over. Got him. Didn't even move it. 
Oh, is this a small mouth? Yep. It's a decent small mouth. Not bad. I mean, small, small mouth, but that's all that's in here, really. Ooh. Small mouth like baby, small mouth like baby large mouth. That is official too. Three large mouth and one small mouth. That's pretty good for an afternoon. Pretty sweet. Another success. Another successful one day. One of these days, I'm gonna be gone for a little bit. Chelsea's gonna go into labor. We're gonna have a baby. Takes a little adjusting, I hear. I might take a break for a little bit. But then we'll get right back into it. Don't worry, I'll be back. I won't even be gone that long. Let me know what else you guys wanna see. What kind of lures I should make. I listen, I write stuff down, I remember. Let me know. On to the next, bait.